This morning we are going to go to the book of Daniel, chapter number 3. I preached on these verses maybe two years ago or so and uh, was just uh, really undecided where I was <clears throat> going to go this uh, Sunday to preach. Just couldn't get in my spirit uh, where the Lord was leading me and, and the Lord directed me to these verses uh, just this morning and said, I want you to share uh, from here today. So I believe that God has something that he's going to do here for us this morning through his word. How many of you know that one word can set you free? One word from God can set you free. You don't need a whole book. You don't need a whole chapter. You don't need a whole sentence. Sometimes just one word from God can set you free. So in Daniel chapter number 3, and we're going to begin reading in verse number 19, a familiar story that all of us will know and recognize. It says, The Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the expression on his face changed towards Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and commanded that they heat, uh, the, that they heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. And he commanded certain mighty men of valor who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning fiery furnace. And then these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and the other garments, and they were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because of the king's command uh, was earned and the, furnace, and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. And then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, and he rose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? And they answered and said unto him, O king, true O king, Look, he answered, he said, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they hurt, and the form of the fourth is likened unto the Son of God. Now in verse 26 and 27 in our final readings, it said that Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out and come here, and then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came from the midst of the fire, and the satraps and the administrators and the governors and the kings and the counselors gathered together, and they saw these men on whose bodies fire had no power, their hair had not been singed, nor were their garments affected, and the smell of fire was not upon them. Dear Heavenly Father, as we enter into your word this morning, I ask God for you to challenge our hearts, challenge our spirits. God, let us understand that even though we might be in the fire in our lives, we cannot be burned, we cannot be consumed, and we cannot be overpowered because greater is you, O oh God, that was, is within us than anything that can come against us, than any power that is in the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Give him praise in this house. The first thing that I want to say to us this morning is that God wants to bring something good out of this message this morning. God wants to bring something good into your life today. I know that some of us might be going through the greatest fire in our lives. How many of you have ever gone through a fire in your life? Maybe you're going through a fire right now in your life. Maybe you feel like you're consumed and, and you feel like the heat has been turned up seven times hotter and, and you just don't really know what to do. Well, I know that some of us are here this morning and we are dealing with those kind of pressures and situations in our lives. I'm talking about the kind of heat that when it's turned up, it makes you want to cry. I mean, you literally 
feel like just weeping and crying because you don't know what to do. I know that it might sound crazy, but what you ought to do is you ought to begin to give God praise even when you're going through the fire because there's something about when you're going through the fire and you begin to praise and you begin to worship and, and you begin to magnify and you begin to worship God, all of a sudden things begin to change in your life. It's kind of like the three Hebrew boys here that were in this fire. They, they tried to get them to bow down to a false god, but they had decided that as for me and my house, we're going to serve God. We're not going to serve a false god. We're not going to serve Baal. We're not going to give up into the false gods, but we're going to worship God. And so the end result of the story was that when they worshiped God, even through the fire and even through the circumstance and even through the trial that God moved and God took them out of the fire in which they were going through and so I have come to tell somebody this morning and to challenge somebody today that if God is on your side in which I know that he is and if you're going through the fire this morning you don't have to burn you can go through the flood and you don't have to drown you can go through the mountain and you don't have to be consumed because greater is the God that is on the inside of you than every weapon that has come against you. And so I submit to you this morning that you ought to give God praise and thank God that you made it to the fire because some people never made it to the fire. They never made it to that point and they died before they got to the fire. Some of you understand what I'm saying this morning. The three kings, the most mighty men in his army, they died at the door. They never made it to the fire. I'm going to tell somebody this morning that it's a miracle that you have made it to this house today. Day. By all rights, you should be dead. By all rights, you should be six foot under. By all rights, this morning, you should be in a grave. Because if God had not helped you through that wreck that you went through, because God made you late for work, and a person that uh, should be in a jail cell this morning, spending the rest of your life in prison, a person that maybe had a wreck, and the officer said, There's no way that you should have uh, made it through this accident. There's no way that you should be here today. You should be dead, but by the mercy of God and by the goodness of God, you're still alive. Somebody else I'm talking to this morning, you should not be alive. You should be dead this morning because of a drug overdose and because of decisions that you made. You've had You've put enough drugs in your body to kill an elephant. You shouldn't have made it. Other people didn't make it as far as you have made it. Maybe you have running buddies. I was just thinking the other day that, that most of the people that I used to run with when I was in the world and, and choosing to do things that were not of God, most of them either today they're spending uh, time in prison or they are dead. I just heard last week of one that overdosed. I'm going to tell you, you are blessed to be alive this morning. Don't take for granted the mercies of God. There's somebody listening to me right now that knows that it's a miracle that you are not in a mental institution this morning. Some of us should be in a mental institution because of depression and, and because of things that have come against us. Other people have gone through a lot a lot less than what you have gone through and, and they've lost their minds and, and they went off the deep end and they, they lost their, their minds and they, they, they are wrapped up in a world of confusion and a world of loss and, and not understanding where they are. You say, what are you trying to tell me, Pastor? I'm trying to tell you that you ought to be praising God because you made it to the fire and because you're going through the fire because there's somebody else that did far less than you did and they died at the door can somebody give God praise this morning 
The three mighty men who were voted the most likely to succeed, they had everything going for them. If anybody should have made it, it should have been them. But the scripture said that they died at the door. On the other hand, nobody expected that you were going to make it, but you are here this morning and you are alive. You are breathing. You're in your right mind. You're here and you're serving God and, and you're filled with the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Ghost, and you have a power that's been exempted in your life don't complain because you go through a fire what you ought to be doing is you ought to be praising God that you made it to the fire because I could have died at the door I could have died in that car wreck I could have died of that drug overdose I could have died I could be serving a life in prison this morning I could have lost my mind I could be in a mental institution I could be sitting on a bar stool this morning but God had his hand upon my life I didn't even know that he was watching over me I wasn't serving him but at the same time God was keeping me in his hand why because he had a purpose for my life because he had a reason for my life because he had purposes for me to do and, and to, fu fu to fulfill God had a plan God had a purpose and he sent his angels to deliver me hallelujah I don't know about you this morning, but I can say that I might not be the strongest one. I might not be the smartest one. I might not be the most popular one. I might not be the one that everybody expected to succeed, but I can say to you this morning and submit to you by the word of God that I have made it and there is no other explanation except the power of God. It's not about me. It's not about might. It's not about power, but it's by the Spirit Spirit of God that we are set free. Can we give him praise in this house today? You see, a few years ago, nobody ever thought that you would be saved. Nobody ever thought that maybe you would have a preaching ministry on your life. You know something? God likes to use the most Ordinary people, those that everybody else has given up on, those that people say will never amount to anything, that will never come out of drugs or, or will never come out of alcohol or, or will never do this or will never do that or, or will never succeed. God likes to take the least of people and build them into extraordinary people. That's what God does this morning. Maybe nobody ever thought you'd be saved. A few years ago, nobody ever thought you'd be able to pray or, or work in the gifts of the Spirit or, or do things for the work of God. Somebody needs to shout this morning. You need to say, God, I thank you that you brought me to the fire. God, I thank you that you're going to bring me through. God, I thank you that you're going to fulfill my life. Can we give him praise this morning? Now, when we get to the fire, we've somehow got to get out of the fire. The Bible said that weeping may endure for the night, but joy is coming in the morning. That tells me that there are periods and there are seasons that we go through weeping. There are times that we go through weeping in life and we cry and, and we have tears and we're weeping on the inside, but we are not meant to stay in the weeping period forever. Some people spend their whole lives wrapped up in weeping and one event after another, they're, they're never happy, they're never free, they're, they're never fulfilled and it seems like they just go from one battle to the next and it's almost like they have put a curse upon themselves. But I'm going to tell you this morning that there comes a time when we've got to move beyond the weeping and we've got to step into the morning and we've got to receive the joy that God has for our lives. I'm not going to weep forever, but this season too shall pass and greater is he that is in me and joy is coming to my life. You see, 
You need to be thankful that you made it to the fire, but God wants to take you through the fire. As a matter of fact, right now you might be in the middle of a fiery furnace in your life. But the miracle that started at the door and if God wasn't going to bring you out he would have just allowed you to die at the door. You wouldn't have made it to the fire if God didn't have a purpose for your life. You need to tell somebody You need to say, I'm coming out. Say it, I'm coming out. God would not have brought me to the middle of it if he was not going to bring me out of it. I know that I'm talking to somebody right now that is going through the fire and I know you're feeling the heat. I didn't come to tell you that the fire is not real and that the fire is not hot and that the fire doesn't hurt, but I came to tell you that God is about to bring something good out of the fire. I know that it might sound like insanity, because there is no tangible physical evidence of anything good in this fire that I'm going to. But friend, you are going to make it. You are not going to burn up. You are coming out. And I don't mean you're just going to crawl out on your hands and your knees all beat up and and broke and disgusted and and no clothes and no money and, and no peace and no joy with your eyebrows all singed and burned up, smelling like smoke. I came to tell somebody this morning that the devil is a liar. When you come out of this fire, you're coming out blessed, you're coming out healed, you're coming out with some money, you're coming out with some joy, you're coming out with some peace, you're coming out with a greater anointing than you have ever had before in your life. Something good is about to happen. Now let us get back to our text. The king chose his three most mighty men. In other words, the men that were chosen were his strongest, his meanest, his best trained soldiers in his army. These men knew how to battle. Somebody said, Pastor, I don't understand it. It just feels like I'm fighting on a different level. It feels like the enemy is stronger than he's ever been before. It seems like he's smarter than he's ever been before. I want to tell you again, the devil is a liar. And that ought to tell you something. The devil wouldn't be bringing out the best in you if you were not a threat to him. Listen to me. The devil would not be bringing out the best in you if you were not already a threat to him if God was not planning to use you. The fact that he's bringing out the big dogs tells me that you must be a threat to him, that you are getting closer to your destiny, that you are getting closer to your purpose, that you're getting ready to step into a new anointing that you've never had before in your life. And so what the enemy wants to do is he wants to intimidate you and he wants to back you down. Did you know that the greatest tool that the enemy uses is discouragement? Discouragement is the enemy's number one tool because the very moment that the enemy causes you to become discouraged is the very moment that you become ineffective in your ministry for God. The enemy tries to come against us and he does it sometimes in a very subtle kind of way. And so they bound them. 
You see, this is the first thing that the devil wants to do is he wants to bind you. He wants to restrict you. He wants to limit you. He wants to contain you. He wants to take away your liberty. He wants to take away your freedom in God. And so one of Satan's greatest griefs is to see the children of God walking and living in liberty and expressing themselves in joy and peace and worshiping and praising God without restraint and without fear and without reservation. You see, the enemy doesn't care if you come to church and just sit up on a pew and, and never worship God and, and never give God praise because you're no threat to him. But when you begin to worship God and you begin to give God praise, even when you're going through the fire, that's why the enemy wants to turn up the heat in your life. But if you can keep worshiping and if you can keep praising, you're going to come out on the other side and you're going to be bigger and better and badder than you've ever been before. And so what he does... He sends things our way to push us down and to back us up. He wants to quiet us down. He wants to put a lid on us. He wants to dampen our praise. That's why sometimes when you come into the house of God, he wants to condemn you. The, the devil wants to bring condemnation upon your life and he wants to make you think about the past and everything you've ever done wrong so that you don't feel like you're worthy to praise God. There's nobody that is worthy, but Jesus is worthy and he died on a cross for our sins so that we could worship and give him praise. So he wants to get us tangled up in fear, to get us tangled up in anxiety and worry because he knows the power of our praise. And so the Bible said that they cast them into the fiery furnace. They were not just cast into a fiery furnace which speaks of adversity and trials and, and hardship and pain and sorrow. But scripture said that seven times greater, seven times harder, more intense, more painful. I know I'm talking to somebody right now who is fighting something that you have never fought before. And the attack is more severe. It's more aggressive. The pain is deeper. And it's more deeper than it's ever been before. The pain is deeper than night. And the night is darker. It seems heavier. And it's lasting longer in your life. But I remind you this morning that something good is coming out of the fire. Scripture said they fell down in the midst of the uh, fiery furnace. You see, I know this morning that we have faith and we don't want to be negative. But if I were to ask for a show of hands this morning, how many of you would be honest with me and say that you've been down a time or two in your life? We have all been down in our lives. We've all had our backs against the wall. We've all been in tunnels before where we couldn't see a light. And the only light that we could see was a freight train that was coming directly toward us. If you will admit it this morning, since you started the Christian walk, you have fallen a time or two. The fact is sometimes the devil will hit you with something you never expected and it knocks the wind out of you and you find yourself lying on the ground and you say, what happened? I know I like to use this example so often, but when we were kids, they had those things that you could hit and, and knock them down, and, and they were light on top, but they were heavy on the bottom. They had a foundation on the bottom. You could take your fist and, and knock it down, but it would bounce right back up. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what we've got to do in our walk with God. When the enemy comes in and knocks us down, he might beat us down, but we're going to jump right back up 
The devil thinks he has you, but you have a fiery praise that will not burn off. You have a fiery praise that will burn the bondage off of your life and will set you free. The devil thought he hurt you. He thought he made you cry. He thought the battle was over. He thought if he turned the heat up that you would stop and that you would quit. The devil thinks he has you this morning. Your enemies, the ones who saw you go into the fire and took pleasure in it, the ones who said you would never make it, the ones who said that you would burn the fire, the ones who said that the drugs would kill you, the ones who said that you would probably die as an alcoholic as all of your buddies have already done, you can tell them and you can look them square in the eye and you can say, I am still here, I am still fighting, I am still moving, I am still progressing. Yeah, I went through hell, but I'm still here. Yeah, the devil hit me hard, and I went down, and it hurt, and I cried for a little while, but I'm still here. And I have a news flash for the devil that says, I'm up again. I'm fighting again. My feet are loose again. I've got my joy back. I've got my peace back. I've got my dance back. I've got my praise back. Greater is God that is in me than every weapon that can come against me. You see, it's in the fire that you really learn how to dance. It's in the fire is where you really learn how to shout. It's when you're in the fire is when you really learn how to praise. And so, you know, I never want to forget where God has brought me from. I never want to forget where God has taken me from. I never want to forget the life that I used to live and where God has taken me to today. And so when I think about that and I think about the goodness of Jesus and I think of everything that he's done for me, it's not a big deal for my soul to cry out hallelujah. Thank you God for saving me. Because I shouldn't be here this morning. I shouldn't be alive this morning. Just as many of you should not be here today. But it's only by the grace of God. So you need to tell the world, world, I'm going to praise God like I've never praised him before. I'm going to shout and dance like I've never danced before. Because now I know not only can the God I serve keep me from evil and keep me from the snares and from the traps that the devil has set out before me, but the God that I serve can walk right in to the fiery furnace, right into the middle of the hell that I am going through, and he can lift me and he can liberate me in my point of need right in the middle of the darkest hour of my life as we return to the music this morning I'm talking about a God that can shut the lion's mouth and they can't even take a bite I'm talking about a God that can breathe through his nose and create a super highway through the Red Sea that two or three million people can cross through on dry ground. Ladies and gentlemen, there's no other God that can deliver of this sort. And I want to give you some news this morning. The God that has done that is the same God that wants to bring you through the fire today. God wants to show the devil who's boss. 
And as I close this morning, let me give you some good news. The same fire that intended to burn up the he three Hebrew boys, it didn't burn them up, but it burned up the ones who were intending to burn them up. Which says to me, I don't have to worry about my enemies anymore. Don't worry about those haters and those agitators because God can take care of them for you and you're not even going to have to say a word. You're not even going to have to lift your hand. You just need to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. God said, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And I will repay. You see, to those that this may not mean anything to some of you, but for those who have some enemies, it means a lot. The fire liberated them. The fire burned off the things that had them bound. You see, I found out when I got in the fire, there were some things in my life that I didn't need, that I needed to shake loose off of my life. There were some things that were holding me back and it took the fire to set me free. The truth is, there was some stuff that I did not want to let go of and the fire had to get it out of my life. I got free when I got in the fire. The fire set me free from pride and from self-righteousness. I know we don't talk about it much, but there are some stuff, there are some things in our lives that do not belong in our lives, and God needs the fire to deliver you from it. Is there anybody in this building this morning that's glad that you're free? You are free this morning. You are free. You are free. You are free indeed. Now I want to say something to those who are going through the fire right now. And you know that the devil has turned up the heat and he's intensified his attack, attacks against your life. You're the one who ought to be shouting and down, dancing and praising God right now because what the devil has done by increasing and intensifying the fire against your life is accelerating the process. And it's accelerating your preparation. He's getting ready to give you seven times more joy, seven times more peace, seven times more money, seven times more anointing. Somebody needs to be accelerated right now. It's not punishment. The fire is not punishment, but the fire is a preparation for what God wants to do in your life. As we stand in this building this morning, talking to somebody who feels like you've been in low gear, like you've been walking around in quicksand, like nothing seems to work out, like you take one step forward and you take two steps backward. I came to tell you, friend, that God wants to accelerate your life. Can we just worship God across this building this morning, oh Heavenly Father? God, we ask God for you to accelerate it this morning. Accelerate us, God. Accelerate us, God. Prepare us, Heavenly Father. Let us walk through the fire. Let us walk through the testings. Let us walk through the trials. And let our faith be genuine. And let our faith be strong. And let us come out greater than the way we went into the fire, oh God. Walk with us, God. Talk with us, God. Oh, Heavenly Father, we worship Certain circumstances, Hallelujah. things I could not understand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many times in trials, weakness blows my vision. My frustration gets so out of hand. But still I am reminded, never been forsaken. Never had to stand the test alone. As I look at all the victories, the spirit.
spirit rises up in me. Through the fire, my weakness is made strong. And he never promised that the cross would not get heavy, and that he would not be hard to climb. He never offered a victory without fighting, but he said he would always come in time. Just remember when you're standing in the valley of decision, and the adversary says, Give in, just 